Hello, welcome back to How to RV. I am Jason, and today I wanted to take you through what it's like to actually go to an RV show or a big dealership and what you're looking for in an RV. To do that, I wanted to bring my friend here, Travis, with me today because he's never had an RV or really gone to look at one before. So we're going to see what it looks like from his eyes and what he's kind of expecting going into something like this. And then for me to talk about things from somebody that's had one before and what it's like to have an RV. And if I was to go buy one today, what those differences kind of look like. So Travis and I got together earlier and we were talking about coming up with a list of items for you to think about. Uh, from two different perspectives, one from him who's never really gone and looked at RVs like we said earlier to someone like myself who's had one, who's done this YouTube channel stuff and has created a list already and I'll share a list with you guys in the description down below. I'll leave a link there to this same list that I've come up with. So we're going to go over some of those items. So what is one of the things on your list that you came up with? I know you talked to your significant other. And oh, yeah. You talked about a few things that are important to you. What are some things that are important to you? Well, the first thing that came to mind was size and, you know, how accommodating we want uh, the RV to be. How, you know, basically we're, we're not a large family, but we do accommodate guests from time to time. So we at least would like to have maybe one or two possibly extra spaces, mm -hmm. but mostly just for the standard family two to three people with that perspective kind of get a good idea of what i want to look for yeah so size is a big deal right right so that's actually one of the things on my list as well as talking about the size of the rv that you're going to be looking for and what kind of access points you're going to be looking at and storage and stuff like that and we'll get on all that in my list here in a little bit so size is one thing so how big and stuff like that what are some other thoughts that y'all had uh Basically, being as accommodating features as you would expect from your home, as well as your RV. That way, you won't exclude some amenities to accommodate uh, lifestyles of camping. Right, right. So, so for a lot of you out there, right? So, as we go through this list today, this is not all inclusive, right? These are things that are important to him and his family. And my list is just some basic things for you to think about before going and looking and purchasing an RV, especially if you've never been out there before. So you got the RV size and accommodations, things that are in the RV that are going to pertain to you. So right, does it have a shower? Does right. it have a place that you can put your dog if you want to leave your dog for a day or exactly. whatever those things may be? You know? right. So what are some other things that you came up with? Uh, also costs. <laughs> that was one of the things that, yes. <laughs> that the wife did warn me about, too. That's why I didn't bring my wallet. Think about costs. You want to make sure that you want to be within your price range and not exceed it to the point where you're paying more for your RV than you do for your home. Because remember, this is just a vacation spot. So this is just potential. So you want to make sure you want to have all your ducks in a row for that, as well as accommodating your home lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's a good point. I like that. So. He said that this is a vacation spot for him. For me, we go out, I don't know, twice a month. So we go out a lot. It's more than just vacation. I'm out now doing this video at an RV Expo. You just happen to be in town and we're right. going to come and join me today, right? So it's more than just a vacation for me. We go out a lot. We go right. to adventure, do a lot of adventures and stuff like that. So uh, it's all perspective on what you want out there. And this perspective is vacation time. So um that's three different items there that we've gone over so far how many items did y'all come up with all together that are important to you for looking for an rv well those were the main things is just uh size um how comfortable we can make it and how much space we can um actually compact without exceeding the <laughs> right. room, of course right because you can't go out driving your house around that's just impossible right but that as well as uh cost because we want to make sure that it's cost effective too that we don't want to we don't want to break our budget especially if we're still using it you know right you right. budget so you came up with three very good things that you want to bring with you as a mindset to come in looking for an rv and again travis has never gone out and looked for an rv before he came to the rv expo today and this is the first time you've ever gone and looked at first anywhere time. that's had an rv before so first time you see the three different things that he said that's important to him and his family to come to an rv expo and that brings me to my list so what I want to do is I'm going to go through my list okay. and we'll just briefly talk about different things that I've talked about and 
I want to get your opinion on are these good things to think about for someone like yourself if you haven't thought about them before. So what we'll do is we'll go through the list real quick mm -hmm. and say, yeah, I didn't think about that. that's a good one. Or maybe something that I should take off the list before I put it together for these guys to have in the description down below. Okay. All right. So one of them is which type of RV do you want? So there's a bunch of different types out there. There's cars that you can drive. There's fifth wheels, there's travel trailers, there's ones that you tow on from the bumper, there's ones that you tow from the bed of your truck, and all that stuff. There's all kinds of different types out there. So in this, I said it's kind of good to have an idea about what you want before going in and looking at all this eye candy out here at an RV Expo or a really big dealership. The second one is amenities, and you touched on that a minute ago, which was great because we have some commonality in our list here. Uh, this one, I said, you know, it's nice to talk about, you know, do you want to have something that has a shower? Something that has a big kitchen. I know you like to cook. So having a really big kitchen is probably a little more important than having a little tiny itty bitty kitchen, right? All right. And then uh, bunk beds, if you have children or anything like that out there. Ours has bunk beds because we had uh, kids before right. when they're grown and gone now. But now we use it for storage, which okay. helps out a ton. But those are things to think about. Budget. Ah. So you touched on budget, right? Money always sucks. So <laughs> it does that. And these things aren't cheap these days. Oh, no, right? they're not, especially so, with the rate of inflation. You know, a couple of the things that I touched on was um, how much are you willing to spend? Right. Right. And then monthly payments. If you're going to be buying an RV and you're going to be making payments on there, what is your comfortable piece of what your monthly payment is going to look like? Right. And then the last one is factors of having an RV along with other costs. So... You got fuel costs, you got campsite costs, you got the cost of things that you're going to be going out and doing and seeing, right? stuff like that. Um, something else that's good to think about is, are you willing to put a little more into the monthly payment of your RV and spend more time in your RV? Or do you want a little less payment and have a little more money in your wallet when you go out to campgrounds and campsites to go out and adventure and see things? You know, it depends on what you want. Oh, yeah. Those are great points to touch on. This talk on budget piece because a lot of people get hung on that and it's easy to get caught on a like, budget piece because you see extra digits and you look like yeah does do i really want to pay for this yeah or can i pay for this that should be you know the more prudent question because if you can't you shouldn't be here so, yeah <laughs> so as you go around to a lot of these expos and stuff and you see the sticker on there and i don't know if you know this already and we'll see some more later they'll have a sticker on there that says monthly payment oh yeah that is a true monthly payment if you're going to put 20% down. So that's something to think about when you see the stickers. And it's, online does the same thing. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're going to put 20% down, then you can get pretty close to what the recommended monthly payment is, depend on all uh, their factors with your, uh, your financial status and all that stuff. But that's pretty close to what the monthly payment is going to look like. So just be aware of that, guys, out there. When you look at the sticker or you look online, it says monthly payment right. is about this amount. That's with that 20% disc, uh, oh, yeah. 20 down before buying. Oh, yeah. So you've got that. It's very good to have your ducks in a row. Yeah. yeah. And those credit statements, you know, all taken care of. So the next one I want to talk about is tow vehicle. Okay. So uh, a lot of people will go out there, and salesmen will do this too. They will allow you to buy an RV that exceeds the capability of whatever you're towing with. So if you have a really large SUV or a pickup truck, and a lot of people have typical regular pickup trucks, right? Right. The... Ford F 150s, the uh, Chevrolet 1500 series, GMC Sierras, uh, uh, all the, the, your basic truck that you find on a lot everywhere. Right. And they have a limit on the which they can tow. Right. So there's stickers on the truck, and we could do another video if you want to leave something in the comments talking more about tow vehicles and understanding what your capabilities are. You need to look at the limits of what your tow vehicle is capable of towing, and that is from a safety reason. For one, you don't want to tear up your vehicle. Right. And two, you want to stay safe on a road, not just for yourself, but everybody exactly. around you. So that's really, really good to know. You're not going to go buy a 13,000 pound fifth wheel, put that into a 1500 series truck and expect to go down the road because that truck won't pull it for one. No. And two, even if it could, it is not safe. So understand your tow vehicle and what the cap uh, capability of that is. And your limitations as well. Yeah. And your capabilities. Yeah. The next thing on the list is storage. Talking about storage inside of the RV. So there's a big thing out there with uh, RVs and talking about storage. Everybody wants more storage. But... Sometimes you're not going to have all the stores that you have at home, so you can't expect to have that in your RV. Now, with storage, 
it is important to understand what do you want to take with you right. and what kind of storage you're going to need. Right. Now, for our RV, we have very minimal storage, but I have a really big bit in the back of my truck that I can put stuff in. But it depends on what you want, right? right. So if you want a storage so that you could put any and everything that you would ever want to go camping with in your RV and leave it there all the time, then you're going to probably want to make sure that whatever you're buying has a storage for that. So if you were to go out, what kind of things would you be looking to take with you? Probably a lot of stuff that is pretty unnecessary. But <laughs> with that in mind, I'd probably try to keep the storage under a uh, minimal base so I can have a tilt just like, um, just like you. I would go with the basic size just to see where my capabilities are mm -hmm. as far as storage, because I don't know how much I would need <laughs> yeah. to bring versus how much I know I would need to carry for everyone else. Right. So, so let's think about it from this way, from a storage standpoint, you got clothing, right? Right. That's, that's big. You need to have something to wear. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The other one is you're going to be wearing your clothes and you're going to have to have somewhere to put the dirty clothes. Exactly. Right. So those are the basics. So now you got to get into how much cookware do you need? Yep. How much pantry space are you going to need? Yeah. How much fridge space are you going to need? Right. The other one is things that you're going to want to bring with you. Do you want to bring a tent? Chairs? Right. Do you want to bring a grill? Exactly. Uh, you like to cook. Oh, yeah. And yes. I've heard that you're good on the grill. I don't know. It's homework. Uh, I've heard that you're good on the grill. It's so you're going to want to bring a nice grill with you. So yeah, yeah. all these things are going to have to have somewhere to pee, to, somewhere to stay inside the RV oh, or yeah. on the outside storage. You know, you out there, leave down in the comments on what kind of things you think you would want to bring with you and what kind of storage you, you would want to look for. The next one is RV build quality. The reason I say that is that you want to just pay attention to if something is built right. So okay. when you look around RVs and you see things that looks like they're not cut exactly right, or there's a lot of like sawdust shavings on the floor oh, right. or something like that, it's good to make sure that you pay attention to those things so that you're getting the best quality you can have. Right. Now it's, it's known out there that if you go to buy an RV, you're driving a house down the road over potholes and bumps and everything else. So things are going to wiggle loose. Right. They're going to come apart. There's going to be things that you're going to have to work on, yeah. but, Outside of that, you want to make sure that you have the best quality that you can have. And that's something I didn't even think about because, you know, of course, if you buy, you know, if you're spending this absorbing a lot of money for mm -hmm. a house on wheels, you want to make sure that it has the durability of a house on wheels, that it can actually right. stay in right. an element. Right. Absolutely. But, you know, just remember, you guys are driving out there. It, the road is meant for perfect conditions, but it's imperfect as all we all have. Yeah. There are potholes, there are obstacles, there's all kinds of things that happen. So, of course, safety first, be aware. And, and that's coming from somebody that really knows roads, right? You spend a lot of time on the road, don't you? Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. So the next one on the list is about how often you're going to go camping, all right? So for like me, I like to try to go out at least twice a month. Hmm. But there's a lot of folks out there that want to buy an RV, and they want to go maybe twice a year or maybe even once a year. Just right. a long vacation. They take their camper out. They do their thing. They go home and that's it. Yep. Right? So it's good to know what kind of RV you want based off of how often you're going to go. Right. And how roadworthy it is. Right? Exactly. It, you're going to put 20,000 miles a year on one versus, say, four or 500 miles. That's a big difference. Right? Oh, a huge difference. The next one you kind of touched on earlier, and that's talking about family size, so children, pets, stuff like that. Right. If you're a soloist, you're going out by yourself, you may not need a 45-foot RV. Wow. You may only need a camper van or something like that for a single person. But if you're going to have a family of 12, you're not going to fit 12 people in a camper van, right? Uh, no. no. Yeah. So, that's, so it's good to understand what your family size is <laughs> exactly. going to look like. I know for me, typically these days, it's just me and the wife, but we've got 200 pound dogs plus a small dog. Which and, is pretty much a large family. Yeah, so. yeah it's like a <laughs> large family. Matter of fact, one of the bunk beds is where the dog stays. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. his That's his little bed now. Yeah. Those are eight good recommendations. And like I said, down in the description below, I'll have a list for you guys to download if you want to go and have a checklist or an items to remind yourself. But I do have a couple more items on the list I just wanted to discuss. Okay. And it's more open for discussion mm -hmm. and this recommendations, if you uh, will. So one is do not buy at first glance. Uh, so typically people that go to RV shows or big dealerships and stuff like that. Oh yeah. There you, you get over inundated with all the different types of RVs out there and they're set up to look pretty, oh, right? Yeah, the lighting looks good. 
Everything's plugged in and ready to go. Everything's, everything's set up and clean. Everything works. Yep. Everything's open. Uh, you know, it's, it's set there to appeal to you right. so that you want to go buy something. And when I first started looking, I looked around at RVs all the time. And I was looking at them. I was like, man, I like that one. Ooh, I like that one. Ooh, I like right. that one. Ooh, I like that one. What? If you get into information overload, mm -hmm. then your brain really doesn't have time to settle to think about what you really want versus what you need. Yeah, exactly. So you'll see the huge feature and be like, I want that. Yeah. And forget all about it, everything else that you need. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But go to the shows. Yeah. Go to the big dealerships. Oh, yeah. Go there with the intention of not buying, but looking around so that you know what you want. What? Right. You get the ability to go in and look at all kinds of different types to get an idea of kind of where you want to be, what you want to look at, but don't buy it right then. Oh, yeah. Because most likely you're going to end up with something that oh, yeah. you don't want in the long run. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, the next one on there is do your do some research. Oh, yeah. So the good part about going to the big shows and the big dealerships and stuff like that and finding out different ones that you like, right? You right. like a notepad, you write down, oh, I like this model, I like this model, I like this model, and I like that model. The internet out there is huge, a plethora of information from different people that have different aspects of reality of what they bought. Um, you could take those models with you, go home, go on the internet, look and do some research on what people thought about that specific model that you might be interested in. Oh, yeah. And then the last thing that I have... It's just make it a family decision. Oh, yeah. If you're a soloist, it's pretty yeah. simple. Or you may actually, if you're a soloist, you may want to ask your family. Because yeah. you may be looking into something that you don't mean. Uh, very true. Yeah. Very true. Um, but if you're a family, don't decide on what you want from just your own perspective. Oh, yeah. Unless your family says, go get something and we'll be fine with yeah. it. But it's good to have the buy-in from everybody in the family. Kids, mm. wife, husband significant other it doesn't matter who it is yeah. get their buy-in too because now they're going to be able to enjoy that little piece that they had a buy-in for of oh, that specific yeah. rv and then you're going to have your little piece too so oh, yeah. that little compromise together is going to have everybody happy on that first trip oh yeah definitely definitely it, it makes a much peaceful trip trust me yeah. not quite a few <laughs> <laughs> so in that any other recommendations anything mm -hmm. that you can think of so we're gonna go around here a little bit and go look at a few rvs yeah. i'll probably get and something then, as we look around you're gonna get something i'll probably think of you didn't bring your wallet remember Unfortunately, I did, <laughs> but I love cards at home. So. No, there you go. <laughs> so no buying today. Right. Follow no. the recommendations. Exactly. <laughs> We're just going off the checklist today and see which ones check boxes. <laughs> yeah. So like we said, if you want to leave down in the comments, if you have any questions like that, we'll do our best to answer them. Or somebody in this community will answer some of those questions as well. If you're looking for a specific model and have questions about them and you're having a hard time finding them online, let us know or let me know. And I'll see if I can help dig up some information. So I hope this little conversation between somebody who has an RV has been there, done that, to somebody who hasn't helps you out a ton. And like I said before, down in the description below, we'll have a link to a list that you can use for yourself that we went over today. Also, if you have any comments, leave them down as well. Until the next time, enjoy your trips, enjoy your buying experience, and God bless. God bless.